So thanks for coming up for this event. Yeah. Uh, you did a really great talk, especially talking about um, the problems with NATO, yeah. especially. Would you say um, there's problems with the UN and would you disband that too? Well, you know, most of the uh, multilateral lateral organizations, so-called, do more mischief, harm, uh, and, and make more trouble uh, than any good they do. But when you're picking out uh, the worst, I think NATO is. And the reason for it, it's self-evident to anybody who thinks about it that the Soviet Union disappeared in 1991. Right. NATO was only organized to, quote, contain the Soviet Union in 1948 when it did have 50,000 tanks uh, on the so-called Western or Central Front, uh, including the Warsaw Pact. But when all that disappeared, what was the point? Germany's got an economy three times bigger than Russia. Is Russia going to invade Germany? Of course they're not. The NATO 28, not counting the United States, has an $18 trillion GDP. Russia's is 1.5. Right. Uh, Russia's economy totally depends on exports. Their economy uh, exports $350 billion a year. Half of that goes to Western Europe and to Eastern Europe. Are they going to invade Europe, right. destroy their uh, export market, and blow up their economy? No. Right. Cool hand uh, uh, Vlad, right. okay, right. <laughs> is a smart guy, okay? I didn't say he's an angel. I'm just saying he's a shrewd, smart guy. And he's not going to invade, uh, you know, the Brandenburg Gate. He's right. not going to occupy the Rhineland. This is nonsense. And so you have a bureaucracy that perpetuates itself by inventing threats in missions that have nothing to do with peace and security in Europe, but have to do with providing a cover story for what I call the empire, America's uh, intervention in the Middle East and the Far East and, you know, Afghanistan. The, the, you know, the, the, the crime of Afghanistan is another whole topic. We've been there 18 years. We're going to be sending people there to fight soon who weren't born uh, when, uh, you know, the thing opened up, now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, opened up in 201. This is the longest war in history. The whole World War II lasted 50 months, and we had to take on uh, both the Japanese, uh, uh, you know, uh, war machine and Hitler, and in 50 months it was done. What the hell are we doing in the Hindu Kush, right. the armpit of the world, which is utterly irrelevant to anything, 18 years after uh, allegedly uh, bin Laden was there and you know nine years after uh, he is allegedly put to rest <laughs> eternal right. rest yeah. okay I, I don't understand it what do you think about uh, yeah I agree entirely and, and Japan too has military bases like why are we still yeah. in Japan why do we have we have a hundred thousand uh, troops support personnel and families in Japan and Okinawa well you know <laughs> Uh, that war ended a long time ago. Yeah, that war ended over 80 years ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and the Japanese don't even have a military to speak of, okay? Right. Or why are we still on the Korean Peninsula 65 years after uh, an unnecessary war ended, uh, taking on a tiny little country that has a GDP of, uh, last time I checked, 30 or 40 billion. I mean, right. it's like a few hours worth of U.S. production. The only reason that uh, Kim Jong Jong un uh, has had this program to develop nuclear weapons is he don't want he doesn't want to be a regime change victim he saw what right. happened to Gaddafi do you want to be another Gaddafi right. he saw what happened to uh, Saddam Hussein who was our ally and he ended up uh, at the end of a uh, rope okay? right. so uh, if we weren't in the regime change business I'm absolutely certain that the North Koreans wouldn't even be thinking about a nuke. They can't afford it. Right. And if we weren't on the peninsula with 30,000 troops constantly trying to stir up tension, the Koreans would have solved their own differences and uh, you know, find, found some way to live together long ago. The idea that we're still in Korea with 30,000 troops in the year 2019 is ridiculous. It's ludicrous. But, yeah, it's ludicrous, but it's... Washington is so caught up in what I call the imperial city, running the world, running the American empire. Th these guys don't do their job domestically, like balancing the budget and uh, controlling uh, the growth of the federal government. They'd rather be, you know, sort of plenty potentiaries <laughs> uh, running around the world, uh, uh, trying to run the world. Right. And, and that's what Washington has become. How do you think you can uh, start the disbandment of these bases? How, 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 would, how would that proceed? How would that look like? Well, it would be very easy. As I said, when the Cold War ended in 1991, the purpose of NATO was done, finished. 
<laughs> George Bush Sr. should have parachuted into Germany <laughs> at the Ramstein Air Force Base and mission closed it. Mission accomplished. Closed it. Right. That would have been the real mission accomplished. Right. But it didn't happen. So how could you do it? Well, it'd be easy. If you had a change in policy, we would recognize right away the Europeans could take care of their differences with Russia and they'll, they'll work it out. Uh, that we could recognize right away that China is a house of economic cards, 40 trillion of debt, uh, more uh, you know, malin malinvestment, waste. It's, it's not an economic miracle. It's uh, you know, like the greatest bubble in history. We don't have to contain it. We'll just let it collapse like the Soviet Union did. Right. Sooner or later it will. But we shouldn't be sending warships, uh, warships into the South China Sea to contest whatever they're doing on those sandbars. That's ridiculous. Why are we selling all these weapons to Taiwan, sending uh, warships through the Taiwan uh, Straits? I mean, if they sent one, uh, you know, off the coast of Texas, uh, we, we would they probably. Go Mexico, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, our foreign policy is in very bad shape, and now it's bipartisan. It, it, a while back, at least when I was in Congress in the 70s, and I was an anti-war protester in the 60s, there was a healthy debate about what the role of the United States was in the world. Today, there's a bipartisan consensus. We run the world. Right. There was so much clamoring just to try to go into Syria. Yeah. <laughs> that almost happened. Yeah, yeah, it almost happened. And finally, and Obama drew his red line, and then there's a false flag gas attack designed to lure him in. And uh, Obama started to get all of this negative feedback from all over the country. It was happening on Capitol Hill. Uh, and then the British were smart enough in Parliament to uh, re refuse to join. Right. And he backed off. But. What that led to was a revenge campaign by the neocons mm. uh, who thought they had finally gotten the next stage of their regime change plan going because Obama was going to bomb Syria, they were going to take out Assad, next country liberated. It got thwarted because Putin was smart enough to step in right after uh, Obama held back and say, let, let me negotiate a uh, dismantlement of all these chemical weapons that he did. Right. Okay, uh, and so the deep state people and the neocons went nuts because they had been thwarted by Putin. They designed, they designated him as the next, you know, guy to demonize. And within uh, months, we were in the Ukraine uh, uh, funding that uh, coup right. as a retaliatory step to lure him in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so like maybe Greenland may be uh, not a great investment. Yeah. What about buying uh, Hong Kong? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the thing is we shouldn't be expanding the territory of the United States. If we should be doing anything, we ought to let California become its own government. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and we ought to let the Midwest, upper Midwest, uh, you know, be a farm and factory country and right. uh, let Florida be a vacation land. You know, right. uh, you, you can't centralize all this. This is an imperial city. Yeah. It's like Imperial Rome. These people have a view of the world and, and, and a sense of their self-importance that is beyond anything that uh, is compatible with a peaceful, democratic uh, uh, republic. Right. Well, at least we know how Rome fell apart. It overextended its reach. They had many bases. Yeah. 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 And I guess maybe inevitably that's, if you can't get it through policy, maybe through the Fed and the way it will collapse monetarily would be another way to finally see the end to this uh, military adventurism well, all over the, the world. That's the only way it's going to happen. In other words, we're uh, drifting into a humongous fiscal crisis. Mm -hmm. And finally, when it gets bad enough, and you know, the debt service is going to go from a half a trillion to a trillion a year, uh, we're going to have the baby boom retiring in the 2020s at a rate of 10,000 people per day, each and every day, you know, week in, week out. Uh, this, the welfare cost of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all the rest of it's going to balloon, and the crisis will be incredible. Right. And even then, uh, the, you know, the Fed, I think, has totally discredited itself. It won't be able to print the money. It's another whole uh, topic. But when the crisis comes and they start asking, are we going to cut 80 million people off Social Security or Medicare, or are we going to uh, close some bases uh, in places you never heard of, right. uh, it's probably they're going to close the bases. So I think there's hope, but it has to be crisis driven. Mm -hmm. These clowns in Washington today are not going to do it voluntarily or preemptively. They're going to only uh, do it when they're driven to the wall when there's no money left and they look at this massive uh, 
you know, uh, uh, budget uh, cost uh, of the whole empire, as I call it, uh, that's when it'll probably finally change. That's when they'll find the missing trillions of dollars then yeah. from their audit. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know that that'll ever be found, right. but um, it's not so much that the money is missing, it's that the money is misappropriated in right. the first place. You know, we don't need to be running the world from Washington, right. and we don't need 11 carrier battle groups to land forces anywhere on the planet. We don't need these massive uh, air attack and airlift uh, capabilities uh, to put in forces. There's no place in the world that can threaten American security. Right. The only threat is a, a nuclear one. If someone tries to blackmail us, we got a good deterrent. What about no. Canada? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, or, uh, you know, who knows? Right. Uh, I so, really appreciate you yeah. coming out here today for the anti-war speak. I learned a lot, especially uh, the interventionism or um, but yeah, you're right. There is no yeah. military might that yeah, matches what we have out there. Yeah, yeah. So, and also there's these two broad, deep oceans right. that prevent any armada of invaders from coming here. So if we're not going to be invaded and we're not going to be blackmailed, uh, nuclear blackmailed, where's the threat? Internally. <laughs> well, the threat is that all of these organizations that live off this, the defense contractors, the think tanks, all of these contractors in the Beltway that live in all these uh, affluent suburbs with these uh, you know, high-end homes and so forth, where's all this money coming from? Right. Yeah, they're, they're creating every day a, a justification, a threat inflation, a reason why they have to keep uh, going and why they should keep getting money and keep doing what they do. I call it sort of like a self-licking ice cream cone. Right. Right? Uh, they, they, you know, they, they create their own justification because there's so much money to do it. Right. And the only way you're going to stop this is to dry up, uh, dry it up at the source. I hope it comes sooner. Well, yeah. thank you so much okay. for you. your talk and uh, thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> okay.